Hey guys, Jerome here at 18 Minute Fitness Personal Training Studio. I had someone on my channel request that I do a video on a bodyweight workout that somebody could do. And there's a lot that goes into that. Um, I don't just want to give a single basic bodyweight workout routine. My goal when I create any kind of workout routine for anybody is to generally come up with something that is not only accessible for people across all ages and all degrees of physical capability, but also something that is going to be fairly inexpensive from a financial investment standpoint. One of the advantages of bodyweight workouts is most movements don't require a lot of equipment, but one of the potential downsides is, is that's going to make certain movements and certain muscle groups harder to hit. So my goal is to kind of try and find a compromise between those two. What's a routine that I could create that's going to cost very little money in terms of need of equipment, and I'm thinking $25 or less, um, and what's something that everybody across the spectrum of physical capability can perform. So somebody who may be fairly sedentary, maybe brand new to exercise, maybe has some aches, pains, um, not a lot of capability. You're not out running 5Ks and half marathons and stuff. And then similarly, what's something that that same routine, somebody who is a little bit more advanced, somebody who is fairly active, but just wants to improve their overall physical capacity and increase their health. Um, could they follow this same routine and experience benefits? So those two factors I'm trying to balance when I kind of came up with this particular routine today. And I should also say that it's not just one routine. Um, I'm giving two main branching paths. One is more body weight focused. And uh, while you don't need equipment, I'm going to emphasize one, maybe two pieces of equipment that you should at least consider picking up based on your physical capability. And the other one is going to be more isometric exercise focused. That is essentially performing muscular contraction while your muscles aren't actually moving. And that's going to require one piece of equipment. Um, I think it's highly, highly, highly underrated and maybe the best piece of equipment you can get for the minimal dollar investment that it costs. And just as one final prefatory point, I firmly believe that isometric exercises, if properly performed, can provide the exact same degree of uh, benefits to the human body as more conventional exercises. That is lifting through a mostly full range of movement to the point of momentary muscular failure. Um, isometrics are not for everybody. So again, I want to provide a couple options here. What's something that's going to fit within your preferences, within your budget, and what's something that's going to fit within your current degree of physical capability. And I will talk through some of those options as we get going here. Um, but again, this is, this is the skeleton to hang meat on. This is the framework. This is the foundation. So if you take these principles, you can create something that will absolutely be safe, effective, and efficient for you at this current point in your life. Regardless of which horn of this, uh, not dilemma, but um, dichotomy, I suppose, that I'm going to provide, either body weight or more isometric focused, there's a couple commonalities with respect to exercise execution that will not change. And to go into these in greater detail, you should see my last presentation. It was called Starting Hit in 2022. And in that video, it's a little over an hour long, I break down every single one of these aspects in much greater detail. So in this video, I'm just going to lightly touch on them. Regardless of whether you do bodyweight exercises or isometric exercises, you want to spend about 60 to 90 seconds time under tension so you want to go at least 60 seconds before you reach momentary muscular failure, but not really much longer than 90. If you start hitting greater than 90, you need to find a way to increase the resistance. And we'll talk about this with respect to isometrics and bodyweight exercises. So 60 to 90 seconds per exercise, and you want to reach momentary muscular failure. Next, you want to move slowly with small pauses when you have a change of direction. The joints in your body are most susceptible to injury when you're at the extremes of its natural range of movement. And also, if you were to very quickly change direction, the magnitude of force being applied to the joints is significantly greater than if you just abruptly came to a stop. So think of like a bodyweight squat. You don't just go from a standing position to dropping down as quickly as you can, or at least you shouldn't. I understand that conventionally they're done that way. What you want to do is slowly lower yourself. Um, what I tell people is as slow as possible to where it's not a series of starts and stops, depending on your capability, it could be three to four seconds. It could be anywhere from like 10 to 12 seconds. Um, somewhere in that range of move, or sorry, somewhere within that cadence, we're going very, very slowly. Once your thighs are about parallel with ground, 
Um, could be a little higher, could be a little lower. Once they're about parallel, you have a slight pause, maybe one to two seconds, and then you slowly start coming back up. And you go up to the point in the range of movement, you start feeling the tension coming off of your legs a little bit. When that movement's getting significantly easier, you have a slight pause of one to two seconds, and you go back down. Keep breathing. Uh, again, I, I keep hammering this point home. And with most of these movements, the hardest things you're going to be doing is keeping breathing and maintaining a neutral head position. Um, again, with respect to your head, you don't want to tilt your neck back really hard. You can strain the muscles in the neck. You don't want to tuck your chin forward. You can obstruct your breathing. And you don't want to hold your breath because that's going to drastically increase your blood pressure. You generally want to focus on compound pushing and pulling movements. I'm a big believer that if you are training things like a push-up, a pull-up, uh, those type of movements to the point of momentary muscular failure, I don't believe you have to do any direct work for like the biceps, for the triceps, or some of these other smaller muscle groups in the body. And again, you want to train to momentary muscular failure. Um, this is the most important aspect. And if you're doing these movements correctly, again, uh, reference my former presentation, the repetition where you reach momentary muscular failure, everyone thinks it's the most dangerous, but that's actually the safest portion of that particular repetition or of that particular set that you're performing. So should you do body weight or isometrics? Both are going to have their inherent advantages and disadvantages. The advantage of body weight exercise, it has little to no equipment necessary. Most things you can just do with, you know, your body the way it is. If you have quite a few pounds to lose, I guess I'll say, um, some body weight exercises can be more difficult, especially if you're fairly sedentary. So this can be a little bit hit or miss with people. It's generally excellent as a starting point. Um, there's not a big investment. You just kind of have yourself and you can do a lot of decent movements to kind of make this happen. Again, some exercises may be difficult. If you're four or 500 pounds, it's going to be really hard to do bodyweight squats. If maybe you're 170, 180 pounds, doing bodyweight squats is going to be significantly easier. Another problem that can happen with bodyweight exercises is, is if you're building some muscle, if you're building some strength, and if your body fat levels are coming down, you're going to reach a point where your body weight will not be sufficient resistance to reach momentary muscular failure within 60 to 90 seconds. That's a good problem to have. Um, so in a lot of ways, a lot of people might be well to start with body weight exercises, but then once they build a certain degree of strength, picking up one, maybe two pieces of equipment could be an excellent idea. Last advantage to body weight exercises is you can measure progress with time under tension. If you're doing push-ups and you can do however many push-ups doesn't matter, um, but you reach momentary muscular failure doing push-ups within 65 seconds. And then two days later, you go back and do some push-ups and you hit 67 seconds. Then maybe three, four days later, you go back this part of your workout, you're doing push-ups, you hit over 70 seconds. It's an excellent way that you can kind of measure progress. You hit the stopwatch to begin, do really, really slow push-ups, slow changes of direction. And when you reach that point, momentary muscular failure, you're no longer able to move despite pushing as hard as you can. Slowly terminate the movement, stop the stopwatch, check your time and record it. Isometrics have that problem. You can't accurately assess uh, progress in that regard using isometrics. The one piece of equipment I would highly recommend if you want to do bodyweight exercises would be some kind of pull-up bar, or maybe there's something around your house that you can safely do pull-ups on, or you have a tree in the backyard, or you have a park nearby that you can walk to and try and do chin-ups or pull-ups. Um, you probably have a way that you can do that. Problem is, if you don't have a decent degree of strength, um, not everybody can do pull-ups, and I'll get into that a little bit once I get more into the bodyweight section. Isometrics. Isometrics will probably require some equipment, either a pull-up bar. Otherwise, what I'm going to recommend when I get in the section in more detail is a heavy-duty lifting strap. Um, costs about $25. You get a set of two. You go have these on it with somebody, and it's probably the single best piece of exercise equipment per dollar that you could ever buy. Isometrics performed properly are good for anybody that's brand new to a beginner as far as up to you know bodybuilders, athletes. Um, if you perform them correctly, isometrics are safe and effective movement for virtually everybody, but they can be quite uncomfortable if you're not used to them, and most people do them wrong. So you may want to start with body weights. You may want to go right into isometrics. Uh, another disadvantage is you need a bit of a knowledge base when creating certain movements, uh, especially if you're using this heavy-duty lifting strap and you want to try and figure out how to do some kind of um, 
some kind of torso extension or if you want to figure out how to do like a tricep extension exercise using this heavy duty strap. So you have to know a little bit about biomechanics, um, strength curves, stuff like that. And again, you can go back and you can reference my last video where I break those down in further detail. Um, I'm going to talk about main movements that you would perform with a lifting strap in that particular section in a few minutes. But if you want to start creating some extra movements for some other areas of the body, you might have to get a little bit creative. And again, with isometrics, you can't directly measure progress. The way that I recommend doing isometrics, um, and I'll get into it in that section, is basically every set is 90 seconds. Um, you really have no way to directly measure force output or time under tension because force output, while it will vary, you have no way to measure it. And if you're always performing the same time under tension, you can't use that as an arbiter of progress. The good thing about isometrics is that's built in. Um, your muscles will get bigger, your muscles will get stronger, your cardiovascular system will increase in capacity and its ability to support these intense muscular contractions. Um, but you can't really measure if you're making progress or not. For some people, that can be a bit frustrating. So let's look at like a sample body weight routine. Um, push-ups. If you can do regular push-ups, great. If you can only do push-ups from your knees, that's also fine. Um, eventually, you'll reach a degree of strength where you can do them more standard. Um, if you struggle to do push-ups from your knees, you may have to look at lying on your back and holding some kind of weight and doing like a chest press off the floor. Um, anybody, the idea is you have this compound pushing movement away from the chest, similar to bench press or push up, whatever the degree of your physical capability, there's something you can do to kind of move these muscles through this particular plane, uh, chin ups and variations. I get it. Not, I would tend to think most Americans probably can't do a pull up or a chin up. Um, you have a couple options here. If you can do chin ups, which is with your palms facing your face, I would recommend that because it works your biceps a little bit more directly. Um, you don't want to go too wide on a conventional pull up because it, it puts a lot of stress on the rotator cuff and the rear delt. Um, if you're capable of doing chin ups, do chin ups. If you can't do chin ups, stand on a chair, get into the top of a chin up position and just hold that as long as you can. And then once you start going down, Still try and lift yourself up and just go down as slow as you can and then just track that time under tension. If you can't do that, even though your arms are going to be almost perfectly straight, just hang there as long as you can and try and do a pull up. And again, aim for between 60 and 90 seconds. And if you can't even get your feet off the ground and try it, um, still stand, go into that chin up position and just pull as hard as you can. You're still going to strengthen the muscles of the back, the forearms, the biceps, the rear delts, everything involved in that movement is still going to get effectively worked. If you're training to momentary muscular failure, if you're contracting hard, so anywhere along that spectrum, if you can largely get your arms overhead and lean slightly backwards, um, you can effectively work everything on the backside of that body. So chin ups, if you can all the way down to, um, just stand there, and just pull into that resistance as hard as you can, if that's all that you're capable of. Bodyweight squat. A lot of different ways people do bodyweight squats. The conventional approach of just squatting down quickly, standing up quickly is stupid. There's no benefit to moving quickly in exercise. Um, again, I, I loosely talked on it before. Say you're standing straight up. There's a couple options here. If, if you don't have like a fall risk, you can just do this standing anywhere. I, if people want to do this at home, I usually recommend just basically standing with your calves almost against your couch. So if you did fall over, you just end up sitting on your couch. Um, you could do wall squats as an option, but what I would recommend, let's just say you're going to do body weight squats over your couch, um, stand directly in front of your couch as if you're going to sit down on your couch. So you you know, the backs of your calves are probably touching the front part, right? Slowly sit down as slowly as you can just until your butt or your hamstrings just touch the fabric, just so gently touch the fabric on the top of the couch and then slowly stand back up to the point where, um, the exercise is starting to take a lot of the tension off your legs. It's hard to describe, but you'll feel it when you stand up past a certain point, that movement will get a lot easier. And at that point have slight pause of one to two seconds and slowly lower yourself again. And you want to do this until reaching momentary muscular failure somewhere between 60 and 90 seconds. When you're no longer capable of standing up, you're still trying to stand, you're still trying to stand, you're still trying to stand. 
and then slowly lower yourself and you'll just eventually end up sitting on your couch. Very, very safe. Um, if you can start going over 90 seconds, you might want to look at, you know, if, if you have some kind of weight that you can hold, maybe, um, What's something heavy that people have around the house? <laughs> I was going to say like a bag of sidewalk salt, but those are usually like 40 or 50 pounds. You can probably find some kind of like five pound or 10 pound bag of something around your house. You can introduce slowly little bits of weight to it to provide a little bit more resistance, but then do the same thing. Uh, lateral raises, same thing. If you have like five or 10 pounds, something that you can use as resistance, um, Think of the movement where most people take dumbbells and they raise them out to the side. You want to simulate that same kind of movement, whether it's, uh, you know, just holding a small bag full of, which I guess what would be really easy thinking out loud is if you have like an empty gallon of milk, a gallon of milk is eight pounds. So if you're just starting off, you're pretty weak. Um, you can probably fill it half full of water, right? Um, if you get a little bit stronger, fill it all the way full. Uh, if you get stronger, still find something a little bit heavier than that. But again, Lift as slowly as you can, raising your arms to the side. Have a slight pause of one to two seconds and only go down to the part in the range of movement where you start feeling it getting a lot easier on the shoulder. At that point, raise your arms back up, pause and hold. So the workout so far, the push-ups are a compound pushing movement, working most of the things on the front of the body. Chin-ups and its variations work almost everything on the back of the body. Body weight squat is going to work the abs, the hip flexors, all the muscles of the legs, the uh, erector spine, a muscle groups, your lumbar extension muscles, glutes. Um, you At that point, you've essentially worked the whole body. And we're just giving it a little bit more volume for a few things. So like lateral raises will hit the medial delt, which doesn't get a lot of direct work on a pushing movement. And it'll also work the trap, which functions to elevate the shoulder. So you're giving these muscles just a little bit of direct work with lateral raises. Then we're going to more directly target um, the lower back the glutes, something like a stiff legged deadlift or, um, yeah, stiff legged deadlift would be best. So if you're brand new to this, you want to have your knees almost straight. It's called stiff legged, but you don't want to lock out your knees, but very, very, very slight bend in your knees. And you're basically folding your torso forward as far as you comfortably can, where you don't start rounding your back. And then you slowly stand up. Um, again, not all the way. You want to keep the tension on the glutes, on the lower back, on your hamstrings. And then you start folding forward again. Uh, this is another one of those things that you can always introduce weight as necessary. So those first six are a good core. And then if you want to do some additional things every now and then, it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea to do some kind of abdominal crunch every now and then. Again, you still want to perform it very, very slowly. You're fine just doing sit-ups or crunches on the floor. I would recommend doing some kind of isometric grip work. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be as part of this routine, but the forearms are important. Um, one of the easiest things you can do is if you have something you can grab, maybe like the back of a chair. Otherwise, what's really, really easy is sit in your car for 90 seconds before you go driving anywhere. Don't do this while you're driving. Don't do, ever do anything to make distract yourself while you're driving. Um, grab your steering wheel and squeeze it as hard as you can. And again, doing anything isometric, um, you don't just want to instantly rip it as hard as you can. You want to gradually build up tension in those muscles. And if you're squeezing really, really hard, you'll work, you'll work your form flexors, you'll work your form extensors, you'll work the brachioradialis. You'll work essentially all of the musculature in the forearms. Um, so for the first 30 seconds, you want to squeeze about half as hard as you can. For the next 30 seconds, you want to squeeze about 75% as hard as you can. For the next 15 seconds, you want to squeeze about 90% or almost as hard as you can. And then the last 15 seconds, as hard as you feel, you can safely go. Form grip work, you can go pretty hard. It's it's very different than doing like a than doing like a maximum effort leg extension. Um, squeeze as hard as you feel you safely can. And when that 90 seconds is up, gradually release tension out of your hands. You don't just immediately let go. And this can be done really, really easy. You can have your cell phone sitting in a cup holder on your car or sitting on your dash hit the go button, grab your steering wheel and slowly start building tension into it. And then you follow those time intervals until uh, that timed static contraction in the forms is done. Slowly release, stop your stopwatch. And that's essentially um, a pretty decent full body, mostly body weight routine 
if you need to get a pull-up bar, you get a pull-up bar. You can find them on Amazon. I think they're under 20 bucks. You can also do push-ups on it if you get the right kind. Um, pretty decent investment depending on your capabilities. So an isometric routine with, um, with this heavy-duty lifting strap. What's pictured here on the right is called the forearm forklift. It's a set of two because it's meant for two people to move heavy appliances. Um, it's every couple of inches. It has um, these almost holes sewn into it that you're supposed to put your forearms through. But if you're crafty with this strap, you can put your feet through that and then you can loop other parts of it around different muscular or diff, around different parts of the body. And you can essentially perform isometric movements that way. Um, there really aren't pictures of how to do all these movements. So you'll have to get a little bit more creative. Otherwise, reach out to me and I can try and take some pictures to show some of you guys. But isometric push-up, you have a couple different options. You can put, you can get into a push-up position and largely get the strap behind you. And then depending on how tight you make it, you can essentially pick a portion in the range of movement of a push-up where you'll be pushing, but the strap is going to limit your range of movement. So you'll be able to push essentially as hard as you can. And no matter how hard you push, you're not going to be able to push through this. Again, let me um, recapitulate timed static contraction protocol for isometrics. Anytime you're contracting maximally for a period of time, this is the protocol that I recommend. We're going to hit 90 seconds, time under tension, um, essentially to momentary muscular failure. But the first 30 seconds is going to be pushing about half as hard as you feel that you can go. Um, the next 30 seconds is going to be pushing about 75% as hard as you feel you can go. The next 15 seconds at about 90%, 90. And then the last 15 seconds, as hard as you feel, you can safely go. Now, I understand a lot of people can't plank for 60 to 90 seconds. If you're trying to do this push up with a strap around your back, um, a lot of times the muscles of the abs might be you know, contracting really, really hard, and that could make you terminate your set. So, another option is you can put the strap behind you and lay on your back and then put your hands through one of these holes in it and you can find a position that's similar to like a bench press that doesn't let you basically move past a certain point um again you want to try and do a time static contraction like this ideally about halfway through the range of movement so you don't and it wouldn't be the worst idea if you can't but depending on your body size which holes you grab um you could do a time static contraction basically that looks like a floor press with your elbows on the floor you might be able to get a little bit higher or you might be near a position of full extension. Either one of those would work, but it would be a little bit more ideal if you're about halfway, about right in the middle. An isometric lat pullover. So this is going to replace essentially a pull-up. Um, if you had these straps, you could conceivably do a pull-up if you had something you could throw it over. Uh, that wouldn't be the worst idea. But another option is to sit on your butt with your feet straight out in front of you. Um, hook your elbows or put your arms all the way through the holes and put the strap behind your elbows. Put the other end um, basically behind your feet, or maybe I should say in front of your feet. So you're sitting on your butt, your feet are straight in front of you. The strap is on the other side of your feet, so on the soles of your feet, and your arms are hooked through the pads. What you're going to do now is you're going to find a length where you're pulling back with your elbows, essentially trying to pull your elbows back as far as they can go. Um, and your feet are going to provide essentially the resistance that's going to keep them from going that far back. If you don't want to use your feet, you could like loop it around a tree. Um, something like that would be another good option for those people that might be worried about putting that much stress on, on their legs. Um, I could understand that you don't want perfectly straight knees if you do this. So maybe the safer approach is put it around a tree sit near the tree, bend your legs and kind of brace yourself. And you're pulling back with your elbows. This is working um, predominantly the lats. It's not going to hit the biceps. It's not really going to hit the forearms, but you can come up with other ways to work those muscles. An isometric squat. Um, these are extremely tough. Uh, Men's health fitness model, Jay Vincent has an excellent uh, body weight workout program. Drew Bay has a uh, project Kratos. Um, it's a bodyweight workout program. Both of those use these movements. Essentially, you're standing on the strap and you can kind of loop it just in front of like your hip flexors near the top of your quads. And you can use it at a certain length to limit how high you can stand up in a bodyweight squat. And then you perform the same time static contraction protocol. And what you realize is that last 
15 seconds when you're pushing as hard as you feel you can safely go you're putting out a lot of force to try and stand up but the, the strap is limiting how far you can stand up so it's a little hard for me to illustrate but i think you can kind of grasp what i'm saying part of the strap goes under your feet um the other part essentially gets looped over the top of your thighs but close to your hip flexors and this will prevent you from standing up uh, lateral raises this is a really easy one um, you can either just grab the strap and loop your foot through one of the loops in the bottom and again you're, you're kind of trying to move your arm up and outwards a good position is about halfway through the range of movement but if all you got was you know a little bit closer to the top or a little bit closer to the bottom that's fine and again use that same 50 75 90 as hard as you feel you can safely go time static contraction protocol uh, strap deadlift Similar to the squat, you'll have a somewhat similar setup. You'll probably end up um, putting your feet through the loops in the bottom and then grabbing the strap and essentially you're bending slightly over and trying to stand up. This time static contraction isometric uh, movement um, is simulating a deadlift, but it's also a hip hinge torso extension exercise. So this is really gonna hit the glutes, the hamstrings, the lower back, and you can perform this very, very safely depending on your capabilities. And then likely, uh, you don't need to do anything isometric with an abdominal crunch, but you still probably want to work something for the abs in there occasionally, some kind of grip work, like I mentioned with the body weights. Um, so depending on what you have available to you, depending on your physical capability, there's a wide variety of options that you could conceivably do. Um, you don't even have to do all these five, six exercises. If you had a pushing movement, a pulling movement, and some kind of either hip hinge or a squat like movement, uh, and you perform those Monday, Wednesday, Friday or so, that would be an excellent starting point for a lot of people to invest less than $25 um, and still see a wide variety of results. So, or sorry, not a wide variety of results, a large degree of results, excuse me. Um, exercise does not have to be complicated to be effective. In a lot of ways, the more you know about exercise, the simpler it should be. Um, the fundamental principles in any aspect of reality properly applied will get you most of the way there almost all the time. You know, you get 90% of the results by just adhering to the basic fundamentals. You can always find different ways to get your biceps more direct work or your triceps or your calves, or if you want to do some kind of like neck flexion or extension or lateral movement, you can find ways to safely make that happen. But if you're just focusing on these basic compound pushing, pulling movements within your existing capabilities and you're pushing your body hard, you will increase those physical capabilities. And then you can start doing more, I guess, complex things if that's what you want to do. But do not overcomplicate your exercise. I hope this helped. If um, you guys need more specific pictures of some of these movements, I'll see what I can do, either what I can find. Otherwise, I'll, I'll take pictures myself. Um, let me know. But anyways, I hope everyone has a beautiful weekend and I will talk to you guys soon.